Today we face interesting times for the Royal Navy and defence as a whole. The dilemma for government and defence planners is how best to maintain support to the progress we're making in Afghanistan while preserving and developing the military capabilities we'll need to face in an uncertain future. And all this at a time when money is tight. Since the new year, you will probably have seen something of the national debate being conducted in Parliament and the media on the future for defence in this country. Along with my fellow service chiefs, I have added my voice to that debate. My focus, as you expect, has been to make the case for having a capable Navy at the heart of the defence and security of the United Kingdom and its vital interests across the globe. Versatile maritime forces are fundamental to protecting and promoting the security and prosperity of this island nation. As I speak, our sailors, marines, alongside their colleagues in the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, are in high demand. 40 Commando has joined hundreds of Naval Service colleagues in Afghanistan. HMS York has been protecting the United Kingdom's sovereign and economic interests in the South Atlantic. Royal Fleet Auxiliary Largs Bay has been central to the United Kingdom's delivery of aid to Haiti and a powerful enabler for the work of charitable organisations there. These are just a few examples of how the Naval Service delivers operational success across the globe, on land, at sea and in the air. It is our trademark attributes of adaptability and our ability to work alongside others which underpins all of that, combined with the enduring presence and global reach of our forces. I sense that despite the inevitable and understandable focus on Afghanistan, where success is so important to the continued credibility of our armed forces, the importance of maritime forces and the value of what they do is increasingly better understood. That is thanks in large part to your important work daily in support of this country. As we look towards the Defence Review later this year, I and my Navy Board colleagues will continue to make the strongest possible case for the continued investment in the maritime forces this country depends upon for its security and well-being. We are making real progress on our equipment programme with exciting and wonderfully versatile new ships, submarines and aircraft coming online. But it is your contribution each day in delivering professional excellence in what you do in your individual areas of responsibility that is a key to the case for the Naval Service. I believe that there are many reasons to be optimistic as we face the challenges ahead of us in 2010. And we have an exciting future. I look forward to it and I hope you do too. Thank you. Thank you.